faithful, those who will hold on, those who will be vendors of truth. The Bible says it, and the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, the rest of her offspring. Those who have been faithful, those who have been standing for the Lord, those who have been holding on to the truth, no matter the persecution, no matter the pain, no matter the agony that they went through. It says the devil was enraged and went to make war with the remnant of the woman. And what does he say? It says, who keep the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ? Abraham kept God's commandment. Moses kept God's commandment. The Israelites kept God's commandment. The New Testament church kept God's commandment. The book of Revelation described the bride of Christ as a Bible-believing Christ-centered, grace-filled movement that keeps the commandment of God. Here are the characteristics that the 12th chapter of the book of Revelation gives to identify God's last day people. He says, number one, they keep the commandment of God. Number two, they have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now notice first, they keep the commandment of God. What are those ten commandments that they keep? Exodus chapter 20, Exodus 20, from verse 3 coming down to 17, the ten commandments. He says, thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. God will raise up a people who will love him so much that they will worship him directly. They do not put their confidence in images and icons, whether they are pagan or religious. God says, come to me directly. We can approach the throne of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is the book we have. God is calling us to sanctify ourselves. It continues. God has a people. God is calling his people. Those who keep the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. God is calling us. He is calling men and women to be faithful to him. He says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. God will have a people that will so respect the name of Jesus. They will accept Jesus as their Savior, Jesus as the Lord. And again, the fourth commandment says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Seven days are thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Here is a commandment keeping people described in the book of Revelation. They keep a seven day Sabbath. That is what is, we are being told here. Here are a group of people who love Jesus so much that they are pure in talk. Thou shalt not commit adultery. They are kind in spirit. Thou shalt not kill. Here are people of true covenant. God says of them in Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10 verse 16. He says, I will put my law into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. Hallelujah. Amen. He sent God's Ten Commandments. Lord, His Ten Commandments are really hard way to live your life. They describe life at its best. God's people are not so super saints. They are weak. They, they, they falter. They make mistakes. At times they sin. But they are committed to Jesus Christ and they believe that God has raised them as a special group, as mothers who are supposed to keep the commandment of God, to be obedient to God, to live according to His will. That is what the Bible calls us to do. The book of Revelation describes the last day people of God. He says the last day people of God, they keep the commandment of God. That is number one. They have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What is the testimony of Jesus Christ? What is this about? The Bible defines the testimony of Jesus in Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. Revelation chapter 19, verse 10 tells us what it means. Having the testimony of Jesus, Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, and Revelation 19, 10 says, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation chapter 12, 
says the bride of Christ is a Bible-believing church that loves Jesus, keeps his commandment, has the testimony of Jesus, or the gift of prophecy. The Bible talks about the gift of prophecy in God's last days. First Corinthians. First Corinthians tells us what the spirit of prophecy says, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The church waiting for the coming of Jesus will come behind in no gift. All the gifts of the spirit will be manifested in God's church. God's church will be a spirit-filled church, a powerful church. We will see miraculous healings from time to time in God's church. God has chosen a people. God's church is a spirit-filled church that is supposed to impact the world. Jesus commissioned his disciples to go into all the world. The true church will be a worldwide body committed to Christ and obedient to his word. In Matthew chapter 28, Matthew 28, 19, 20 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. God is calling a church that is worldwide in nature, a church that is proclaiming the gospel to people everywhere, in languages, tongues, and people worldwide. God has a church that is proclaiming the truth, the good news of salvation to the whole world that they will come to know the truth, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And the good news says, Lo, I am with you, even to the end of the ages. God has a church. He has a special movement. Like the days of Noah, a special movement. Like the days of Abraham, a special movement. Like the ancient Israel, a special movement. Like the New Testament Christianity, like those faithful Christians in the dark ages who will stand for the truth no matter what comes their way. Revelation chapter 14 describes this last day movement has the power and significance of this. Let your heart beat with excitement as Revelation describes this last day people. Revelation chapter 14 as we saw yesterday. Revelation chapter 14 verse 6 says, Then I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. Have the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on earth to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. In this alone, non-denominational movement, or it's just something small. Here is a worldwide global movement that is preaching the gospel to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. Yesterday we said, Fear God means reverence Him. Reverence, that is what we are talking about. Say it with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to Him. How do we give glory to God? To glorify God means to honor Him in how we eat, both in our diet and in our lifestyle. We are to honor God. That is what the Bible says we are to honor Him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20 says, Know ye not that you were bought? With a price, therefore, glorify God in your heart, in your bodies. You were what? With a price, therefore, glorify God in your body. These last day angels are to proclaim the gospel, not just to a small group of people, but it is a worldwide movement. God's final message from mankind declares the hour of his judgment has come. The hour of God's judgment has come. God is calling us to be faithful. Revelation chapter 14 verse 7 says, says, was it he who made heaven and earth, the sea and the spring of water? The creator God is supposed to be worshipped. God is calling us to worship him and to abandon any other thing. Faithfulness, the Sabbath is part of last, God's last day. Mercy. God is calling us to be obedient. God's truth. God's last day people. They are people who are obedient to the word of God. They keep the commandment of God.
God. They have the testimony of Jesus. They are faithful to him. It's a message going to all the world and being proclaimed everywhere. To all people everywhere. God is calling us. He is calling us to be faithful to him. In these last days, God is having a people, faithful people, who will live for him, who will hold on to the truth, who proclaim the truth. God is calling us to be obedient, to be obedient to his word. God is expecting a people who will be faithful to him. That is the proclamation going on. Fear God and give glory to him. Do not obey the beast. Babylon symbolizes what? Religious what? Confusion, as we said yesterday. Therefore, the three angels are calling us out of religious confusion to the truth of God's word. We are being called out of religious confusion to the truth of God's word. God not only called us to be out of something, but also to come into something. Tonight, God is calling you. Tonight, God is calling me to surrender to him, to give my life to him. In the last days, God has a people, a commandment-keeping people, a people who are faithful to him, a people who are standing faithful to God, no matter what, no matter what they have decided to be faithful to him. Tonight, I want to ask you, you want to be faithful to God? You want to live according to his word. You want to keep his commandment. Do you want to worship him as the creator, as the sustainer, as our all in all? God is calling us to surrender our lives to him. God is calling us to yield our members to him. God is calling us to be faithful to him. Tonight, do you want to be among God's faithful people? Do you want to say, yes, Lord, I want to live my life for you? There is nothing this earth has to offer me. Lord, I give my life to you. Lord, I surrender my life to you. Lord, take control of my life and let me consecrate it to you. Are you here tonight? Do you want to give your life to Jesus? Do you want to surrender to Jesus? If you are here and you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to be part of God's faithful view. God's commandment keeping people, people who recognize God as the creator and as such they worship him on the seventh day, which is a day God sets apart as a memorial of his creation, a day God sanctified so that we will use as we worship him on that day, we will remember him as our creator. Tonight, as we bow down our heads to pray, I want you to speak to God. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. You have heard the truth. You have heard the word of God. God is calling us in this last day to give ourselves to Him, to surrender our lives to Him, to be part of His commandment keeping people, to be part of the people who are faithful to Him. Those who serve you, come into your life unto God. You have heard God's message. He is spoken. Since Sunday, the truth has been coming to you. What are you going to do with the truth? What are you going to do with the message that has been coming to you? Are you ready to surrender your life to Jesus? Talk to him. Speak to him. Tell him your burden. Tell him what your heart desire. Tell him whatever that is troubling you. Ask God to reveal himself to you. Ask God through the power of the Holy Spirit to direct you to his truth. To help you to know his truth. As you hear the word of God, that you can give yourself to him. Gracious Father, we thank you for this hour. 
We thank you for your mercy that has come to us. Some of us in the, are in the valley of decision. We are struggling within our hearts. What we should do with your way, with the truth. We have a people who in these last days are faithful to you. A commandment keeping people. People who recognize you as their creator, sustainer, and everything. Father, through the power of your Holy Spirit, give us the spirit of this saint. Help us to surrender our lives to you. Help us to yield ourselves to you. Help us to give our lives to you. Thank you. Bless us, Savior. Bless us. Bless us. And help us to take a stand for you. In Jesus' name. to come and lead us in a short period of prayer as we meditate, as we think about a message that has come to us, what we do with it as we pray.